Good morning. Awesome to see everybody here this morning for this morning's worship service here at the Nexus Hill Church of Christ. Thank you for being here. If you're a visitor, we, we are honored by your presence, but would be even more honored if you would give us a record of your attendance. There are connection cards on the back of each pew where there is a QR code in one of the bulletins you can scan and fill out. Again, we'd be honored for your record of your presence. Let me continue by saying I had a wonderful night last night. I'd like to thank the Salisbury's for hosting the Fall Fellowship. It was outstanding. It was a beautiful night, beautiful scenery, and awesome fellowship. Great night. This morning, our services will begin with the scripture reading by Elijah Salisbury and then a song by Weston Shoemaker. Good morning. Today I'll be reading out of Revelation chapter 5. I'll be reading verses 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and, and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. This morning we'll be singing I Will Call Upon the Lord, page 866. And we'll be singing it two times. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Good morning. Good morning. Would you please stand with me as you're able and join me in worship this morning? It is an honor and a privilege to lead in worship. Two of my favorite youth group songs back in the day. I, I will call upon the Lord in firm foundation. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. I have a living hope. I have a future. God has a plan for me. Of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I put my hope in your holy word, I put my hope in your holy your word is faithful, mighty in power. 
God will deliver me. Of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Amen. Please be seated. Our song before the prayer this morning was Surround Us, Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds. kind gracious heavenly father lord we are truly thankful for another day of life that you have blessed us with god for allowing us to gather here this morning to be in your presence heavenly father we do pray lord that you would surround us heavenly father that you would protect us and keep us safe lord that you would bless us in so many ways as you as you have always done god we're thankful for each family that's represented here this morning we pray that you'd bless them so many that are not in our number this morning that are sick or unable to be here <clears throat> and we pray for them as well heavenly father that you would watch over them uh, today for those who are sick or have tests upcoming lord we we pray for them that you would strengthen and comfort them be with those doctors and nurses uh, who care for them guide uh, those hearts and those hands heavenly father for the family members that, that also uh, care for their loved ones, we, we pray that you would lift them up uh, this morning too. We know what a, a tough job that can be, Heavenly Father, and uh, so we would pray that you would uh, strengthen those people as well. 
so many things, uh, Lord, in our world that are concerning and so many things that we don't understand. Conflicts, uh, Heavenly Father, that are overseas and, and hatred that we see at, um, on, on a regular basis that, that we just sometimes can't understand or comprehend. Uh, Lord, and sometimes we don't know what to ask in those situations. So this morning, Lord, we just would pray that it would be your will. That your will would be done in all of those cases, Heavenly Father, and whatever that may mean. Uh, Lord, we know that <clears throat> since the beginning of time that we've been an imperfect people. Uh, Lord, we know that we make mistakes and that we don't always uh, use the best judgment. God, but we would pray that you would help us with that. Uh, Lord, that we would make decisions that are pleasing unto thee. And those people in higher places and higher powers, Heavenly Father, that, that uh, make decisions for nations, we pray that you would guide them as well. Lord, that their hearts may be softened and that they would look uh, into your word for uh, guidance that they need and understanding. That they would choose a path forward again that is according to your will. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the church family uh, here in Nicholasville. We pray that you continue to bless us, not only here, Heavenly Father, but across the world. Uh, your children, Heavenly Father, the church, we pray that you would uh, bless us all, that we would all continue to grow in, in strength and in love one for another, that we grow in faith, uh, Heavenly Father, that we may be closer uh, to you. Lord, for the men and women in our military, so many that are uh, overseas and apart from their families, uh, we pray for them today that you would bless them with a good day. And those families that they've left behind, we pray for them as well, that, uh, that you would uh, comfort them, uh, Lord, that they, uh, you'd keep them safe until they could be reunited, uh, Lord, when these conflicts are hopefully finally over. Lord, uh, again, just go with us throughout our service this morning. Uh, we pray for Lee as he's about to present another uh, portion of your word, Heavenly Father, that you would bless him and give him a good remembrance of those things that he studied. Uh, Lord, that, that uh, he could uh, present them in a way that we may understand. Uh, help us to, to listen with an open heart and an open ear. Uh, Lord, that we may be able to apply these things uh, to our lives. Uh, and again, that we may grow uh, closer to Thee. Heavenly Father, we are uh, most thankful for Christ Jesus and the hope that we find in Him, the hope of a better place, uh, a better day, uh, once He comes again. And it's in His name that we ask these things. Amen. Our song before Lee brings us our lesson this morning will be glory to his name. If you would please stand as you're able. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory a 
death's fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Really wonderful to see all of you to worship God on this Lord's Day. Remember who you are and whose you are. That's a sentence that might sound familiar to you. Uh, It's one I heard a lot growing up, uh, although I don't think it was ever actually spoken directly to me, but I did hear it a lot. I, I was told growing up that this is something that parents sometimes tell their children, typically their teenage children, uh, before they went out of the house to go hang out with friends or do whatever, uh, whatever they were planning to do. Uh, again, my parents never actually used this sentence on me that I can recall, but from what I understand, it was and is uh, a common one. And the point is uh, that Christian parents want their Christian children to let their actions be guided by their identity, who they are, and also who they belong to whose they are. Uh, So they're Christians, that's their identity, they're also part of that physical family, and they belong to Christ, that's whose they are. So remember who you are and whose you are. We spent the past two and a half months here listening to God tell us in his word who we are and whose we are. We spent the past two and a half months focusing on what scripture tells us about the church and what it means to be the church. When we talked about living the new life last week, I suggested to us that a good way to sum up our new life in Christ is that it is a lifelong journey to become who God already says we are. And that way of thinking captures the way Scripture talks about the church. Scripture actually presents us with two images of the church. On the one hand, there's the church as God has declared it to be. Uh, It is the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the people of God the Father, uh, with all the beauty and honor and holiness that goes along with these powerful descriptions. Uh, there's, There's this image of the church. And then on the other hand, there's the church as it actually was 2,000 years ago, uh, when the New Testament was being written, with conflicts and spiritual immaturity in churches like uh, Corinth, and there was confusion over some of the foundational truths of the gospel in the churches of Galatia, and there were temptations to return back to old ways of living, and we see some of that coming out in books like Hebrews or uh, in the first three chapters of Revelation as the seven churches of Asia Minor are being addressed. And so we see in these two images how the church 2,000 years ago was on a journey of becoming who God already said it was. And the church is on that same journey today all across the world. And this church is on that same journey. And it's not a journey that happens overnight. It's not a journey that happens in a day. It's a lifelong journey. So we've been focusing on who God says we are. In this series, and when we remember what he said, we can better understand what becoming who he says we are is really all about. And something that I hope we've seen as we've been thinking about the church at the core, at the center of who we are as a church is Jesus. He's our Messiah, he's the King of his kingdom, he's the Savior, the Redeemer of his people, the Good Shepherd of his sheep, the Teacher of his disciples and the servant of his brothers. It is through him that God enters into a covenant relationship with us. And so it is through him that we know God in his fullness as Father, Son, and Spirit. I began this series by reminding us of the significance of how we refer to ourselves. 
the church has several different names, several different descriptions in Scripture, and we've settled on one of them, Church of Christ or Churches of Christ, and we are the Nicholasville Church of Christ. This name, this title, should be more than just a convenient way to distinguish ourselves from other groups. With all that we've seen through this series about what, ha what God has done to and for the church through Christ, it has to be more than just a convenient way to distinguish ourselves. This is a title that should make a statement. And so I'd like to close out this series by asking us a question for us to ponder. Are we really a church of Christ? Or are we a church of something or someone else? Are we a church of the world? Are we a church of our own selves? In other words, are we really living as the people God has already said we are? There's a lot of ways we could go about answering that question. And the way I'm going to encourage us to answer it this morning is to ask actually a series of other questions, with each one of them connected to what we've been focusing on during this series. When we talked about God as king over all the universe, king over all nations, and especially king over his people, we talked about what that means. What are the implications of that? It means our God is in complete control. Do we believe that? Do we believe that he is actively at work in this world? Do we believe that he works even through those who oppose him, even through those who do evil and act contrary to his will, so that his will is still ultimately done? Do we believe that he is actively invested in the life of this very church? When we are doing an act of service, do we believe that he is truly working in us, working among us? When we speak with a brother or sister here or greet a visitor, do we understand that how we speak is a reflection of Jesus himself? And do we believe that God is the one who should rightfully be guiding this church? And do we ask him to do that? Or do we try to do all the guiding ourselves? When we talked about God as Father, Son, and Spirit, we talked about how the church relates to all three persons of the Trinity through Christ. We are the people of God the Father, the body of God the Son, and the community of God the Spirit. And the implications of that are very important. That means that the Trinity gives us our identity. Is the way God identifies us the way we identify ourselves? When we think about who we are, when we think about identity, a lot of things probably come to mind. We might think about our work. That's a common place to find identity. We might think about our families. We might think a little more broadly and think about being citizens of the United States. And there can be good in all of these things. But are those things where we first turn to identity? Or do we first turn to the truth that each one of us is a person of God, a child of God, a member of his body, and a bearer of his spirit, is that where our, where our true sense of identity is found. We spent some time focusing on what we mean when we say we're saved, and we talked about the role that faith, repentance, and baptism have in that salvation, and we talked even more about why we need salvation in the first place, and what God has done to make that salvation possible. Is our salvation something that is only a past event in our lives? Something that happened way back then, kind of like graduating high school or finishing a job and moving on to another. It's just something that happened in the past. Is that the way we think about being saved, about our salvation? Or does the truth that we have been brought into a relationship with God that is an eternal one, an eternal relationship, does that shape and direct our lives in the present? and also guide the way we think about the future. Jesus is our high priest who has gone into the presence of God to atone for our sins, and he invites us to follow him there into God's presence and offer up sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. That's what worship is, and we spent some time focusing on the worship of the church. When our high priest invites us, do we follow him there? 
do we really follow him there into God's presence with our whole selves, our whole hearts? Or do we give him lip service and then spend the rest of the week worshiping something else or maybe even worshiping ourselves? Jesus is our minister who models for us what the ministry of his people should be. We see in Jesus' ministry, he's spreading the borders of his kingdom. That's sharing the gospel. He's investing in those who are already part of it. That's teaching and discipleship. And he's doing good to all people. That's benevolence. Are those concerns our concerns? Are they our collective concerns as a church and also our concerns individually as we're daily going about our lives? Jesus is also our shepherd, deacon, and teacher. He's the model for those who hold those roles in the church today. Do we listen to the voice of our shepherd? Or do the voices of this world get our attention more easily? Do we receive the service of our model deacon and pass that service on to others? Do we listen to his teachings? Or do we filter his teachings through the teachings of the world and through the teachings of our culture and listen to those most of all? I know that's a lot of questions that I've just been asking. And and they are questions that we should answer right away. These are all questions that we should sit with and ponder and allow them to challenge us. But I'd like to remind us of what we just focused on last week here. God wants to give you and I new life. The darkness, evil, brokenness, the emptiness of this world is not what he wants for us. He wants us to find our meaning, our confidence, our identity, and our joy in him. And he wants to give us those things through Christ. That's why he calls us to belong to him individually as people of Christ, as as Christians, and also collectively as a church of Christ. But he doesn't just give us this new life once and then leave us to live it out on our own. We live the new life in an old world and in a world that is hostile to the new life. So that new life has to be sustained. It has to be nourished. That's why we have to actively listen to the voice of our shepherd, seek intentionally to do the ministry that he did, renew ourselves before God in worship, choose every day the identity that he has bestowed on us, and yield the control that we want to have over our own lives, yield that control over to him. These are the ways God continually bestows upon us a new life that is grounded in his love and transformed by it, and and a life that continually grows in holiness. These are the ways we live out who we are and whose we are. These are the ways the church grows in holiness. Way back in February, when we began this whole theme for the year on holiness, I suggested to us that living a holy life means becoming the truest version of ourselves. And that's not just my suggestion. It's the Bible's suggestion, and that's because God created us for holiness, and we are most truly ourselves when we are who God created us to be, and that holiness is found in the new life, and that new life is found in Christ, and we're not meant to do this on our own. We're meant to do this in and among the community of those who belong to Christ. We are meant to live out the new life together. And this is why it's so important that we don't only read the Bible in our own homes, though I hope we do that, but it's so important that we gather together around it and read it and learn what it says together like we do in our Bible classes here. This is why it's so important that we don't only pray to God in our own homes or sing a song to God in our own homes, but gather together to offer praise and thanksgiving to him regularly like we're doing right now. This is why God wants us to share in one another's blessings and our struggles rather than only focus on our own. And this is why God wants us to work together to do good and not just do the good that we can do on our own. As we live the new life together, We draw nearer to God together. And God is not just our goal. Drawing near to God is not just the goal of the community's growth. He is part of this community. And he also has 
his own community, as strange as that may sound. But he's, he's not only one God living in isolation. He is one God and three persons in Father, Son, and Spirit. And they already have a rich communal life together within the oneness of God. And as we progress in holiness, we come to know that divine community. We come to know the guidance and nurture of the Father. We come to know our human brother and friend in God the Son, as strange as that sounds, that we can have a human brother and friend in God the Son, and we come to know the Holy Spirit who bears more and more abundant fruit in our lives. We are called to be drawn into a new life that is more beautiful and meaningful and true than anything this life has to offer. That is what God wants for us. That's what he wants for those who belong to Christ. When we first began this series, I tried to offer some reasoning behind the background slide that I chose for it. Um, this, this picture, okay, it disappeared for a second, but this, this picture captures very well the way the Lord's church is in the world. This church-looking structure here is by itself on an island surrounded by water. Scripture calls the church a light in a dark world, a light in a world of darkness. And we all know how very dark this world is. The violence that's erupted on the other side of the world just in the past couple of weeks is one of many reminders of that. And there are so many things we also encounter on a smaller scale in our daily lives uh, to, that, that remind us of that as well. This is a dark world under the sway of Satan. But the light is much, much stronger than the darkness. Christ is much stronger. Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. The darkness cannot overcome it. We are called to be the vessel through whom that light shines. The church is called to be an island of light in a dark world. And that's what happens when we remember who we are and whose we are. That's what happens. The light truly shines when we belong to Christ, share in the life he offers us, and find in him our all in all. That is how the light shines. And so this morning, if you have not come to that light, the light of Christ, uh, we extend the invitation to do that every Lord's Day, to come to him through faith, repentance, and baptism, uh, and begin that new life. Or this morning, if you're struggling, uh, if, you, if you need the prayers of your brothers and sisters, uh, this is an invitation to come forward and receive those prayers collectively. Uh, or if you'd like to pull aside one of our elders here or pull aside myself after worship or someone here who you trust and would like to confide in, uh, we invite you to do that today as well because this is truly a communal new life. Uh, we're not meant to live it on our own. So we invite you to, to, to do that as together we stand and as Nathaniel leads us in our song of invitation. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can be so. I need thee every hour. 
song before the Lord's Supper will be Just As I Am, the new version, I Come Broken. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. Take of the Lord's Supper. The Bible commonly calls it also.
communion. The memorial is a reminder to each and every one of us that Jesus came to this earth, became flesh and blood. He suffered and he died upon Calvary's cross. Brethren, we are just like the first century Christians. They weren't perfect, just as we're not perfect. But they were forgiven. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, the church of Christ every first day of the week takes the Lord's Supper. Amen. And brethren, the reason why is because an apostle named Paul, he knew they were having the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. And you'd find that in, in Troas. If it had been the wrong frequency, Paul would have been the very first one to speak up and condemn it in a heartbeat. Bible also says you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You ever really thought about that? Brethren, many a prayer has been ended by Jesus come quickly. That's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on Jesus to take us home. That's what our faith depends on. Bow with me, please. Our Father, we're ever so thankful for this bread which so fittingly represents our Lord's suffering on Calvary's cross, his death. And Father, we're ever so thankful that he loved us that much that he was obedient, yea, unto death. In his name, amen. You know, many, many years ago, Moses made the following statement. Life is in the blood. And brethren, it is. Our Lord went to that cross and he died. He shed his blood for each and every one of us. That was death. <clears throat> Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're ever so thankful for this fruit of the vine. We so fitting represents Christ's shed blood upon Calvary's cross. We will always be a debtor for what Christ has done for us. He has brought us back. He has paid the ransom. In his name, amen. Separate from the Lord's Supper is the giving of our means. We live in a country, many of us say, we've been blessed so much. We're living the dream, and we are. Let's give back now what God has so graciously given to us. In his name, let's bow. Father in heaven, we're thankful for all the blessings of life, material that you've given us. But also, let us never forget the spiritual blessings that are in Christ. Be with each and every one of us now as we give back unto you what's rightfully yours anyway. After all, you own it all not just part. In his name, amen. There's a plate here in the front. There's also one in the back to your left, my right. Thank you. Well, let me again say thank you for worshiping with us today. I pray you all go from here and have a blessed uh, rest of the day. We'd love to see you back at 5 p.m. tonight uh, for our Bible study, if you're able. Again, uh, let me echo what Chris said at the outset of worship. If you're visiting here, we're so glad uh, that you joined us uh, to worship God today. Uh, we invite you to fill out the connection card if, if you're comfortable doing that, or scanning the QR code on the bulletin. Um, a few other announcements. Bear with me as I, as I uh, work through them. Uh, but let me begin by saying thank you to everyone who joined us for the Fall Fellowship at the Salisbury's House uh, last night, and thank you to the Salisbury's for hosting. Uh, it was uh, a great event, a, a lot of, uh, just a lot of fun, good time spending, uh, being together. Uh, Jason did want, want me to, uh, to mention that a few items were left behind last night, and those have been placed on a table in the lobby, and so if you think you left a jacket or something of that nature, go by there and see if any of that is yours. 
Also, there was some pumpkin painting that went on last night, and those pumpkins are out on the on the uh, front steps or back steps? Back steps. Back steps uh, by the men and women's restrooms. Uh, they're out on the back steps. Uh, so if you see yours, pick it up. He did say some of the paint may not be totally dry, so pick it up with caution. But those pumpkins are, are there uh, on the back steps. Also coming up this coming Saturday will be our trunk or treat. That'll be at 5 o'clock. I uh, encourage you to be there if you're able. This is a great time to just connect with folks in the community, say hello, share some candy, and we also share some information about our church. Uh, and so thank you, everyone who's donated candy, and uh, encourage you again to be there 5 o'clock. It'll be from 5 to 7 uh, this Saturday. Uh, the next ladies' Bible study will be at 10 on November 4th. Uh, that was supposed to be yesterday, but it was moved because Main Street was actually closed yesterday. So uh, it'll be November 4th, ladies' Bible study at 10. And then November 5th, uh, that Sunday, uh, after worship, the youth will be going to uh, Gaddy Town, and uh, they, can, they can actually go for free and bring a friend for free. I uh, encourage you to see Ernie if you have any questions, or just let them know if you'll be able to come so they can have a, a number of uh, how many people to expect. Uh, coming up the following Sunday will be our quarterly potluck. Uh, as you can tell by the title, we do these once a quarter. And this one will be a Friendsgiving one since Thanksgiving is, is not too far away. So uh, I want to go ahead and make you aware of that. And then about a month from now, on November 19th, Sunday evening uh, at 6, instead of having our, our Bible study, we're going to once again go back to the homeless shelter and serve some food there. Uh, this will be the Sunday before Thanksgiving, so this may be a, a, a Thanksgiving meal for them, and so I encourage you to, uh, to be part of that if you're able. We'll have more details and sign-up sheets and things in, in the coming weeks, but just wanted to go ahead and make you aware, November 19th, we're hoping to serve food again at the homeless shelter at 6. And then next Sunday uh, will be another Shepherd Sunday. These are every, every month that has five Sundays, the fifth Sunday. Uh, our shepherds take the, take the lead in preaching and teaching, and so we'll have a Shepherd Sunday uh, next next Lord's Day. So those are all the announcements that I am aware of. Are there any I've omitted that need to be made before we dismiss this morning? All right. Well, thank you again for joining us for worship. Hope you all have a blessed rest of the day. I encourage you to be standing while Nathaniel leads us in our closing song, and then we'll have our closing prayer. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed commands and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me Victory beneath the cliff.
cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let us bow and pray together, please. Our Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come to you this morning, dear God, thanking you for the so many riches and blessings of life. Thank you so much for allowing us to see this wonderful and blessed day you have shared with us to enjoy. You allowed us to rise this morning out of our bed of affliction, out of our slumber, out of our sleep, to see this day, and we'll say thank you, dear God. And as we go through life, life is so short. We pray that we will mend ourselves to be good to one another, as you have been to us. We thank you so much for this congregation. We thank you for the brothers, the sisters of this congregation that Enable us to keep on keeping on, although we are in aches and pains and misery, sometimes attending, but we still attend because we know that's the right thing to do. We pray to God for more wisdom and more knowledge how to serve you and you only. At this time, we want you to go to the hospital, the nursing home. We may be in our own home this morning because of aches and pains. Go with those that can't be with us, be with us today because reason beyond their control. And pray, dear God, for those that can be here tonight, today, and they're not. We thank you for the leadership of this congregation. We thank you for the teachers that's molding our children to be what you want them to be. And as we go through the rest of this day, we thank you for your darling son that hung, bled on the old cruel cross of Calvary, that he is preparing a place for us as we prepare ourselves to be at that place. Go with us and stand by us as we go through the first of the day. And now allow us to meet again upon appointed time. We ask these blessings and all our blessings in Christ's name. Amen.